Hey guys, Jack here with Cowbell Farms and we are going to start some seeds today. The way that I do them. My method, the Jack way. Good morning guys. It's a kind of cold morning. It's about 43 degrees so I decided to come sit in the greenhouse and I have been a little behind in getting the seeds started. Not really behind but normally I already have a lot of these things going behind me. There's a bunch of stuff already going, but we'll talk about that in a little while today or this moment. We're going to talk about just a variety of tomatoes that I have this year. I'm trying some different ones. Some I've already grown before. Some I've grown several years and some I have grown and didn't like them at all. I still have seeds from them. So I don't think I'm going to try them this year. I may skip a year and try them again later. But a lot of these seeds come from MI Gardener. And in the red tomato pile, we have a Roma, an Amish paste, early cascade, fireworks tomato, homestead tomato, brandy wine, rose de barney. Don't know if that's exactly how you say that. And in the yellow variety, I have. Brandywine Yellow and Jubilee. I also have some cherry tomatoes, um, Purple Bumblebee. I do like those. Uh, new Mexican Midget, never tried that. Um, yellow Pear, Golden Nugget. I grew this last year, but it seemed to, it didn't do great. It, it produced a lot, but they got soft really fast on the vine. I'm not sure what caused that. Large Red Cherry, which is by far the best one you can grow because they end up being a good size and you can slice them into about quarter them into fours for a salad and it's a good a good size tomato one of my favorites is brad's atomic grape and i love them because they literally they get fairly big they're almost like a very small roma type in size and then a very prolific one is berry's crazy cherry and I have done these, a couple of these for a couple of years. And then I have a couple of uh, a purple and a green of the tomatillos for salsa verde salsa, not salsa verde, whatever you want to call it. And so we are going to put these in some pots today and have some tomatoes going. Some of the things that I planted earlier in the month, actually, I think it was the end of last month, were some sugar peas, um, cauliflower, eggplant, because it takes a while to establish. I have an ancho, ancho pepper, a uh, giant marconia, uh, bell pepper, green, cayenne pepper, pe pepper, pepper, that's um, the purple one. Uh, habanada, which is the flavor of a habanero without the spiciness. Same here. Not a pino, which is a jalapeno without heat also. Craig's Grand Jalapeno. I grew these last year and these were gigantic. And I like to take the hot pepper and make jalapeno poppers out of the outside being the not spicy and then take the cream cheese and the really hot pepper and grind it together and stuff it in there and then wrap it in bacon. That way you're not overloaded with just so hot that you cannot eat it. Um, Tabasco for pepper sauce, of course. Um, Delicia, Licia, I guess that's what it's called. This is a very sweet pepper. Um, it had a very good flavor, probably really good for roasting. Um, it just has an excellent sweet and savory flavor to it. This one's new, never tried it. It's called the lipstick and it's also a pimento type fruit, kind of with thick red flesh. Um, we got a Sunbright, Bell, Red Bell, Jimmy Nardello. I actually really loved these last year when I grew those. A serrano, good for salsa. I love the flavor of a serrano over a jalapeno any day, but it's a little spicier sometimes. Um, tam jalapenos, which are just basic. Uh, shishatsu, which is like a very prolific tiny bell pepper is what it ends up being like. Um, this one's new, Keystone Giant Bell. I, read, I did these last year, Cora Bells. Uh, 
this is to, I guess you say that, pepperon, pepperoncini, you know, the peppercorn ones that you get on all the Greek salads at the restaurants and at the pizza places. Um, cayenne, in my medical garden, we have a lot of cayenne that I use for fire ciders and as um, just for the capsaicin in it to add to other things in my herbal medicine cabinet. Banana pepper. Then we have feverfew, some cabbage, endive or endivey. I don't know how you say that. Artichoke, um, dill, German and Roman chamomile. One's a, one is a perennial and one's an annual, but this one seeds itself so much that it's pretty much a perennial because it comes back all over the garden every year, not in just the place you planted it, just everywhere. Um, those are the ones that I have started prior to. I'm going to start marigolds and I have a whole bunch of more flowers and things that I will start in the next week or so to get them going. But today we're gonna talk about just how that I plant my seeds and I multi-sow. So I don't put them in one seed in one hole and all that. I just put 25 seeds in one pot and then after they come up and get some leaves on them, then I prick them out and separate them into individual pots or my peppers I grow two side by side most of the time. Um, I may go back to one this year just to see the difference because last year we had terrible weather. So it's like sometimes you don't know whether it's weather or if the method you used doesn't work well. So of course I try multiple years in a row of the same thing just so that I can see the percentage of production and all of that within a span of maybe different weather cycles and you know all of the all the elements combined last year we had so much rain through part of the year it just rained and rained and rained and rained and then it just went from all rain to like a drought which was like it didn't rain for a month and a half and it shot from like 65 degrees 70 degrees up to the 90s for weeks and weeks on end. And so I think my plants really struggled because they were, it was so hot. So I also am going to put up some shade cloth this year to help just kind of shield that a little bit in the hottest parts of the year and the hottest parts of the day. I can come out and just stretch that out. I hope to get that up and running when I can get some help on the farm. Um, it's hard when you have everybody in the family has different work schedules. So it's like, I'm a daytime person. So I have to get up and work in the daytime. My husband's a nighttime person because he works at night. And so it's just us getting on the same schedule for a day or two is really difficult sometimes. So hopefully I might be able to get some help this year and hire me a little help to help me um, put some stuff up and get some things going. But I will start potting these up and show you how I do it here. I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in here before I put my seeds in. That way I don't forget where I'm at in the grand scheme of things. So we'll start with these little pear tomatoes. And this is um, 25 seeds. There's 25 in here. So I'm going to just put some, I'm gonna separate them into two pots, not technically 25 in each one, but if I can get them all out of the package, I'll just separate them into, and just sprinkle them into the container. As such, then we will do the next one. Same thing, just, I just sprinkled them in there. This is why I label first because I have put them in there and then forgot in what order I put them. Just, 
it happens. It happens. And then we will do brandy one. I feel like there was not 25 seeds in there, but. So I have these six cups. Then I'm just gonna take some of my dirt over here in my little barrel. And just kind of cover the tops of them. And try to get the clumps out. I'm actually trying to be careful because literally yesterday I had my arm tattooed and my hand tattooed over to fix some of the ones that were fading. And so the sweater is actually really irritating my arm, so it will come off in just a little bit. That's how I multi sew my tomatoes. And I had, prior to putting the seeds in, wet the dirt really, really well. Then I'll go back and just give it a good, good drench and settle it all down. And that's how I do it. This is what multi-sew looks like into a pot when they start to come up. And the reason I do this is to save space because I actually don't have room on this table. I only have this little, this eight foot table and then this garden table. And I don't have room for everything in individual pots at this time until I start moving out some of my citruses and things, which, I mean, look at the, this one has so many blooms on it. So many lemons gonna be on this tree. Hopefully it'll cooperate this year. I haven't had any in the last couple of years because it has literally gotten down to eight degrees a couple of years in a row here in central Alabama, which is unusual. And so they've got a little nipped here and there. So that kind of sets them back. But not as bad as when the goats ate these trees several years in a row all the way down to the bottom. So these have been trying to get here. If you've seen my earlier videos, I talked about these being like waiting seven years to have a lime. Had my first blooms on them this last year. And then we got a terrible, terrible cold spell and it killed the blooms. So hopefully maybe this year we will come out on the other side. I have all these peppers back here. And the peppers, of course, are not fast germinators. They come up when it's warmer. So it looks like none of these are getting ready all at the same time, except for... These little serranos are popping up. But these that are cooler weather, the dill, the chamomile, fever few, the sugar daddy peas, the end, end vine or end ive or end ive, whatever you want to call it, artichokes, and then these are cauliflowers. There's a lot of them in there. And this is like kale in these. There's lots of kale. And then these are cabbages, heading cabbages. And I mean, goodness at the amount that I have in here. There's probably, I don't even know how many in there. I can't even guess, but this is what I do just to save space. So this helps me out a lot. Now we're going to do some beautiful red tomatoes. I won't bore you with like actually showing you every one of me, every one of me, every one of me putting them in every one is what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm just going to put my labels in first. And then we will separate these out. It's a little chilly out here. But I'm in my tank top. Because my sweater really hurts my shoulder right now. I actually had a rough night's sleep. Because you always forget. If you've ever had a tattoo. You kind of forget that you have to sleep and you have to wear clothes and it irritates it. So, this are my new vines that I got my niece did around my arm. Um, we only did part. We're going to do the whole bottom half also. But this took a while to get 
on there because if you see the detail, she's it's fine lines, but it's super detailed. So I think it took about two hours to draw it. She just hand drew it on there and then we just went from there. And this is, I put these in the right ones. So I'm trying to pay attention. I'm not very good at paying attention while I'm doing something else, but you know, it is what it is. But I'm glad that it is warming up today. It will be somewhere in the upper 60s, I think. We're kind of moving back up into a warming spell. I think we have, I think in the forecast, there is only a few more frosts for the year. So that is lovely. Um, usually by Easter, Good Friday, we get, um, we can plant outside after Easter. We can't put anything that's frost tender out until it is Easter or Good Friday, which I still like to wait. After Good Friday, I still like to wait like a little bit of a week or so. I might move them out under some sheltered area, but I don't just love to throw them all outside and wish for the best. Like I work really hard to get all of these to grow and I don't want to kill them all if there is a last minute frost. We have had some doozies of frost, um, even coming up into the end of March and all of our orchard, like all my berries, um, all the blueberries, the apples, the plums, and all of that, we ended up not getting any fruit whatsoever. None of my um, muscadines or scuppadines fruited. They fruit a few of them fruited, but they fruited too late, like it set them back, and then it frost came before they actually got to set their fruit to ripe. So it actually was kind of a waste, it just set everything back. And I really am hoping that it does not do that this year because I really would love to get a good harvest of all the vegetables. But I love tomatoes, like, tomatoes are just a favorite in my garden for me. Um, I love salsa. I love to make um, all types of sauces, but I literally will just sit down here and eat tomatoes and cucumbers in the summer as my food for almost the entire summer. I just go out there, grab them, come in here. I'll be working and walking around eating some <laughs> tomatoes and cucumbers and things like that. Um, we do grow squash and zucchinis and other types of things, but they're just not my favorite because I love squash. It just gets really old really fast to me. Um, I mean, fried squash would never get old, I don't think, but I can't make fried squash every single day. Like, that's a lot of work. And, I mean, it does taste good, though. I have never frozen it already put together. Um, I know that people do that. It might be something that I do to go ahead and bread it and put it in the freezer, but I think it helps like there's all these things like flash freezing it or whatever you have to do. Um, and I don't have the space in my freezers to lay trays down. Like mine are full of venison and things from the winter and all the meats that we preserve. So I don't have a lot of room to put vegetables up in my freezer. So I mostly just do canning of vegetables or eating them fresh. Um, I put up over 200, over 200 uh, jars of relishes last year in pints and half pints from the garden. And that was off of I want to say I planted 16, right at 16, um, cucumber, and they were the pickling kind of cucumber, and I could not keep up with it. Like, it was so much that I couldn't keep up with it. I couldn't even give it away. My chickens and goats got to where they didn't even care. They were like, we don't even want to eat this anymore. That's how much we had. So, that's not a bad thing to have that kind of production, but it was just a really good year for cucumbers, but that is about all... Um, because I planted so many tomatoes is the only reason why I ended up 
being able to put up tomato sauce and um, diced tomatoes and things like that is because I grew 180 tomato plants last year and a variety of different ones. And because it got hot, they quit producing and started to rot. But I got such a big harvest off of them altogether, like because there were so many, I did get a good harvest. So I don't think it's bad to plant a lot of them just in case that happens. So that's always my backup plan. And this year I would really like to do a different, some different varieties um, and just see if they do better. And then maybe next year, try my favorites of both of the years and plant those to see how they do. Um, you never know, like the weather's so weird. Like I feel like every time I plan for something, it's like the opposite happens of whatever I plan for. If I plan for a drought and that there won't be a lot of rain and I set up a bunch of rain catchment and everything like that, I'm gonna stuff them all on the floor, that I end up having too much rain or too much sun and not enough rain or vice versa. Like it, I feel like it never really does right. You can never predict the weather. That's just common sense. I mean, you can read the farmer's almanac, but I mean, <laughs> they don't know everything either. I have never grown the Roma variety. Um, and tomatoes are really, really hard to grow down here in the South. Like it is so humid that we have to prune them to one stem and make sure there's no other, you know, stems coming off. Like there's not crowdedness. You, we have so many pests because of it, the humidity and the heat. And it's so hot down here that we have so many other things to deal with other than just, I love to look at the Northern people. And I know y'all have like a shorter amount of time that you can grow a tomato in. But your tomatoes look so good. And down here, we just fight all kinds of diseases. Um, I get in rot a lot on them, even when I do everything that you're supposed to do for it. All the nutrients, all the stuff, changing the dirt. Like, I feel like I just can't win sometimes. But, you know, I still do it every year. I still go grow, 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 grow because... I love to plant things. I love to play in the dirt. I love the calming effect that it has to plant seeds and like to nurture them and watch them grow because you're putting something in the dirt. It's just a little seed. And then next thing you know, it looks like this table over here and it's in full bloom. And it's just, it's such an excitement just to know that like this reminds me of things in life. You know, when you plant seeds, they will most likely grow, whether those are positive seeds or they're negative seeds. They're going to grow into something. Um, that's why I try to be positive about things because, you know, life and death are in the power of our tongues and what we say has the ability to manifest itself on people and on ourselves. So speak highly of yourself, speak highly of other people because it's those negative words that plant negative seeds in people's minds to think that they're not able and they're not gonna be able to do it. And I say, even if you don't think you can do it, try anyways. Um, I didn't start out knowing how to do everything. I just tried and tried and tried. And when you fail, that's how you learn, that's when you fail. And there are lots of failures in gardening, lots of failures in gardening. I have probably more epic fails than I have just years of just mass production or just abundance or whatever, but hey, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to try new things. I'm going to, if things don't work out, that's why I'm constantly rearranging and moving things in my garden and revamping the whole situation because if I don't like it one year, I'll try it a little bit different the next year. Or I may try it two years in a row, and if it doesn't work either one of those years, then I know something's not jiving with it, and we'll move on to something else. And if it's a certain kind of tomato, I've had, I grew um, one called a Jersey Devil last year, and it was a beautiful pepper. I mean, pepper. It was a beautiful plant, 
but every one of them, and I planted them in about four, three or four different locations. So different soil, different areas, different parts of the property. And all of them ended up getting in rot. Like I harvested maybe two off the entire plant that I salvaged out of not getting in rot on them. So I feel like that's not necessarily on me that I did that wrong because it was different soil, brand new soil, like just different areas. I think it had something to do possibly with the seed itself from the mother plant. Maybe it brought a fungus with it or whatever, because you never know that where they come from could have something wrong with them also. Oops, that over here. But other than that, I'm gonna set these back here and water them in. Other than that, like, you don't know. You don't know that much about where they came from, but reputable companies will replace seeds. If you have a problem with them or they don't germinate, I know that in my gardener and I know that Baker Creek both have replaced all the seeds. One year that I didn't get germination from in Baker Creek, um, they replaced them and sent me replacements. And in my gardener will send you replacements if they don't germinate well. Um, they're very good. And in my gardener is a place where you can get seeds on the cheap like they're wonderful seeds but they're like two dollars a pack with free shipping so you cannot beat two dollars for 25 seeds or 50 seeds depending on what the plant is and that's not a bad price at all with free shipping i think you have to buy 12 packs of seeds to get free shipping um so like 17 dollars in free shipping but um baker creek will send you it's 350 to 450 up to $5 a pack of seeds, but they have free shipping if you buy one pack of seeds. So you just have to weigh out. There's things that I can't get from In My Gardener that I get from Baker Creek. I also have used um, Survivor Seeds, and there's a few other ones that I have ordered from Burpees, um, Gurtney's. Um, I buy from them from time to time. Um, trying to think of something. Some I can't find at any of those places and so I have to order them specialty. So I order them off of Amazon. You can find some stores. Um, Annie's Organic Heirloom Seeds. Um, she has good, a um, little more pricey. Um, Haas Seed. Um, Haas Tool, sorry. They have great seeds. Um, and I actually have a friend that lives south of me. Um, her name's Tracy. Right now, and she's with Just Dig It Farms, and she actually has a medicinal herb packet, a deluxe and a premium that is on Haas Tools that you can order. So, get those seeds and start your medical herb garden. She's a great, great lady, and I know that the seeds that come from there are wonderful seeds. And yeah, I'm gonna get these watered in, and then I'll be back to load some more seeds. So I finished potting up the tomatoes. And this is what they look like. And I probably have, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 36 pots of tomatoes. Just tomatoes is all I planted. And those 36 pots of tomatoes have about anywhere from 10 to 25 seeds per pot. So that will be a lot of plants to come. Looking so forward to the growth. I will update as they come up. This is March the 12th, so we'll see how fast they come up. We know we're supposed to have some more 30 degree weather in the next couple of weeks, so that can slow them, excuse me, that can slow them down. But we can see that these peppers are popping up even though it's been cold, so they may come on up. And this is one thing I have a really hard time to germinate, and that is eggplant. For some reason, they do not like to grow down here, or at least this kind does. I don't like those big fat ones. So these are the skinny long ones that are kind of like a, more look like a zucchini. They're called ping tongue eggplant. And that is from Baker Creek Seeds. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little venture just to see how I do it at Cowbell Farms. 
and this is a mess over here, you can see. <laughs> but I still have two entire containers of seeds to plant. And so far, I have gotten these two done. And those two took up this entire table. So, I actually have no idea where I'm going to put this other stuff. I'm going to have to find some more tables and put out because this one table will not hold everything. It may hold everything, but we will see. We can rearrange. We can take these things off and rearrange it all. Well, guys, that is all I have for today on this video topic. So thank you for hanging out with me and learning the way that Jack does it. I am a Jack of all trades. I guess that's why my mom named me Jacqueline. I will talk to you later. Guys, God bless and you have a great day. Go grow something.